Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Ayman Azir and welcome to Knowledge Realm. So students, we are studying history of USA and uh, alhamdulillah we have studied about the tribes of Native Americans, we have studied about the Aztecs, the Mayas, the Incas and the Olmec civilization. We studied about these civilizations in detail in the first lecture. Then we started the discovery of America by Christopher Columbus and we studied the colonization of America by different European imperial powers. We studied the colonization by Spanish Empire, then we studied the colonization of America by French Empire, the Dutch Empire and uh, the Portugal also. We studied the colonization of America in detail, but we did not cover the mightiest colonizer of that time. We did not cover British colonizers. So today, students, we are going to cover the 13 colonies settled by British in America. In the previous lecture, we studied that why British took more than 100 years to sail towards America and what were the factors behind this delay. Then we also covered that what were the factors that finally took British to America. We covered this in detail and this was the beginning of the story of colonization of America by British because this is a long story. So today we're going to study how British settled and why British settled 13 colonies in America. We're going to study this 13 colonies in detail. We would study the story of all the 13 colonies in detail. And we would try to cover everything about these 13 colonies. So this is going to be very interesting. And uh, I would try to make it simple for all of you. So all of you can memorize it very easily. So just stay focused and let's get started. So students, here are the 13 colonies that British established in America. And uh, British established these 13 colonies along the eastern coastline of America. Here I have attached the map. You can see right here. First of all, British settled Virginia in 1607. It started with Virginia in 1607. Here we have Virginia. Then Massachusetts. Here we have Massachusetts. And then Maryland in 1632. Then Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Connecticut, North Carolina, South Carolina, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, and Georgia. Here we have Georgia. It was settled in 1732. This was the last colony settled by British in America. And we would study the story of all these 13 colonies today. I have attached a map here and um, you all should practice drawing this map. This is a very easy and a very important map. So these were the 13 colonies settled by British in America and we would study the story of all these colonies in detail. So before starting the detailed study of the colonies, first I think we should study the types of colonies. Well, there were three types of colonies settled by British in America. These were Royal Colony, Proprietary Colony and uh, Corporate Colony. So what was the Royal Colony? Well, as the name suggests, it was a colony controlled by the king or queen of the respective time. For example, Virginia. Well, first Virginia was a corporate colony. It was established by the joint stock London Company. But after the wars with the Powhatan tribe of America, the king took the colony under himself. Uh, I don't remember when it happened. I think it was in 1644. In 1644, Virginia was converted from uh, a corporate colony to a royal colony. So Virginia is a very good example of royal colony. Then we have a proprietary colony. Very simple definition of this colony. This is a colony owned by a person or a family. A colony that is given to a person or a family by king himself. For example, New York. New York was a colony that was given to Duke of York, whose name was James. He was a brother of King Charles at the time. And uh, this colony was given to Duke of York. This is the reason this was called New York. Then Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania was a colony that was given to a person, William Penn, by the king of that time. Then we have Maryland. Maryland was given to Lord Baltimore first Lord Baltimore. So this was also a proprietary colony. So what is a proprietary colony? Proprietary colony is a colony that is owned by a person or a family and uh, King himself 
gives this colony to a person. Then the last type of colony, corporate colony. A corporate colony is a colony in which a group of settlers, for example, a joint stock company, is, is settled. A group of settlers is given the charter of the, of the colony by the British government. For example, Massachusetts. Massachusetts was a corporate colony and Virginia was also a corporate colony when it was established. It was established by a London joint stock company and uh, the British government gave charter to this company, London Charter, London St Joint Stock Company. Then Massachusetts was also a joint stock company, a, com a joint stock colony. Massachusetts was also a joint stock colony. Uh, the charter was issued to Massachusetts Bay Company. And uh, Massachusetts Bay Company established this colony. So these were the types of colonies that we should understand before studying the history of the colonies of British in America. Starting with the Virginia, the first colony of British in America. Well, English settlers came to America in 1607. English merchants formed a joint stock company named the London Company, which were, which sponsored colonization of America. And James I, who was the king at the time, granted the charter to the company and English settlers landed in America in 1607. There, they made a settlement which was called Jamestown in 1607, and it was named after the king of that time, James. But then they started expansion and they, they made a colony. So the first colony of English in America was called Virginia. And it was called Virginia because uh, the queen who preceded James I, she was a virgin. She was Queen Elizabeth I. She never married. So they named this colony Virginia after Queen Elizabeth I. Queen Elizabeth I died in 1603 and James I succeeded Queen Elizabeth I. Well, students, when these British settlers went to America, they settled in America, they faced a very harsh time there because they were not used to the environment of that new continent and they were not used to how people used to live there. They did not know anything. So they faced a very harsh time. And um, in 1609 to 1610, they faced a starving time and they survived very in a very difficult time. Their leader was John Smith at that time and Powhatan tribes helped them survive there. Powhatan was a tribe there and uh, their chief, their people, they helped them and they taught them how to survive in America. They taught them how to grow food, how to grow corns, how to, where to fish. They told them every, they taught them everything and they helped them in the survival and um, they supported them. Then the colonies discovered tobacco and introduced tobacco to their motherland. And in March 26, 1622, Indian tribe Powhatan attacked the foreigners. Why they attacked the foreigners? Because the students, this is the nature of human that one cannot see a person taking control of, of one's land. And this is what Britishers were doing there. They were taking control of the land of Powhatan tribes. They came to America in 1607. Powhatan tribes helped them and uh, they taught them everything and they taught them how to survive in America. But then slowly they started gathering strength. They started strengthening themselves in America. They started expansion. The colony started thriving. And this was the thing that the chief of Powhatan tribe was not liking. The chief of Powhatan tribe was perturbed about their, their expansion. He was not liking all of this. And he was thinking that these people are taking control of our land. So he started to 
plan a revenge and um, in march 26 uh, in march 1622 indian tribe attacked the foreigners and it happened on march 26th of 1622 they started this slaughter of the foreigners and uh, they wiped out one third population of foreigners then the british are also retaliated they killed the people of indian tribes and uh, they tried to protect themselves and uh, they they killed the indian tribe the people of indian tribes and then the final battle took place in 1644 in 1644 fighting was renewed and pohatan chief died leading to an end of pohatan tribe in america so this was the end of pohatan tribe in america now if any of you has ever heard about the Pocahontas. Pocahontas, she was a Disney princess. There is an entire movie on the Disney princess Pocahontas. Pocahontas was actually a real figure of history. I studied about Pocahontas in the book uh, by Robert W. Romini, A Short History of USA. Pocahontas was actually from this Pohatan tribe. She was the daughter of Pohatan chief and she was a very good lady. She helped these uh, foreigners and uh, she was the daughter of Pohatan chief. So I studied about this uh, Disney princess Pocahontas in the book. I did not know that uh, she was a real figure. But uh, when I started the history of USA, I found out that she was a real figure of history. So this was all about the Virginia, the arrival of British in America in 1607. Now we will study the story of Massachusetts. Well, Massachusetts was a colony that was established in 1629 AD by English people. So why these people came to America? Well, students, we have studied the factors behind the discovery of America. And uh, there were many factors. One of the factors was the search of gold and fortune and new land and uh, the economic crisis in Europe, the social crisis in Europe. And we have started that many people came to America in search of gold and fortune and jewels and all the things that were described by Marco Polo in his travelogue. But students, not all people came to America in search of gold. There were some people who wanted to flee the persecution, the religious persecution in Europe. We all know that um, there were religious conflicts in Europe at that time and uh, there were wars between Protestant and Catholics. So some of the people who wanted to flee this persecution, they migrated to America. And Massachusetts is also one such colony that was established by such people, that was established by the people who wanted to flee the religious persecution that they were facing in Europe, in England. So a group of separatists sought freedom of religion and they fled to Holland in 1608. But they did not know that Holland was a place where they, they cannot live and they cannot uh, survive. So they moved to Holland in 1608 but then from Holland they decided to move to America. So they sought permission from the king of that time. Uh, I think king, king James was ruling in England at the time so they sought permission from King James and uh, they gained permission from the London company to settle in Virginia. But they could never reach Virginia. Here is Virginia on the map you can see here is Virginia they actually wanted to go to Virginia because they knew that in Virginia there were their brothers the English people and they wanted to go to their colony but they never reached Virginia rather in November 1620 they landed at Plymouth that is in north of Virginia and there they signed a compact and it was called the Mayflower Compact. Now what was this compact and 
What was this compact about? Well, this was about the compact that uh, these people pledged allegiance to the king of that time and these people promised that they would make rules and regulations of the colony and they would abide by those rules and laws of that colony. They signed this compact among themselves and they said that, okay, we, we, we do pledge allegiance to the king of that time and uh, we abide by all the laws and rules that uh, would be settled with the passage of time for the betterment of the colony. So this was called Mayflower Compact. Then Charles I gave a group of Puritans the permission to form a joint stock company in 1629 called Massachusetts Bay Company. Now all this is ha this was happening in back in England. A group of separatists went to Holland in 1608 and in 1620 they landed at Plymouth. This is a separate group. And back in England, another group of Puritans sought permission from Charles I. And they sought permission to form a joint stock company called Massachusetts Bay Company. And this happened in 1629. Charles I gave permission to form a joint stock company in 1629 that was called Massachusetts Bay Company. Charles I gave permission to this group of Puritans. And this group of Puritans was led by John Winthrop. John Winthrop was also a Puritan and he thought that the Anglican church is not pure and there is a need to purify this church. So he just wanted to move from England and uh, he he wanted a, ex, an excuse to move from England. England. So he established a joint stock company, Massachusetts Bay Company. And with the help of this company, he moved to America. And uh, studies show that uh, he led a great migration. Thousands of men, women, and children migrated to America under the leadership of John Winthrop. This is John Winthrop, if you can see at the back of the screen. John Winthrop, he led this great migration to north of Virginia that became the colony of Massachusetts. And it was the same area where the people 20 years ago landed in, in 1620. I mean, not 20, 20 years ago, 10, 10 years ago. The group of separatists who first went to Holland and then went to Plymouth and si signed a Mayflower Compact. This was the area where John Winthrop came later and uh, they settled a colony that was called Massachusetts Colony. Now you can see here, this, this right here is Massachusetts Colony. This was a part of Massachusetts Colony. And then this was another part of Massachusetts Colony. Massachusetts Colony was actually divided by another colony that was in between these two parts of Massachusetts Colony. And it was New Hampshire. New Hampshire is in between Massachusetts Colony. So this was the story of Massachusetts Colony that was established in 1629 AD by John Winthrop. Let's study the story of Maryland Colony. Maryland Colony was actually established in 1632 by a person named George Calvert, who was the first Lord Baltimore. George Calvert actually proposed a colony for Catholics especially. We have studied that in America, Puritans were settling their colonies. Massachusetts was actually a colony that was settled by a group of Puritans uh, that was led by John Winthrop in 1629. Massachusetts was established in 1629 and um, John Winthrop was a Puritan who was leading this group of separatists. Then George Calvert was the first Lord Baltimore he proposed that we should settle a colony of Catholics also in America. He wanted to become a proprietor of the colony, but he died before the approval of his proposal by the King of England. And we have studied the type of colony, proprietary colony. A proprietary colony is a colony that is given to a person or a family by the King of England. Then George Calvert actually died 
before the approval of his proposal by the king of england so his son took the responsibility of settling this colony his son cecil calvert he was the second lord baltimore he inherited the permission in 1632 but uh, actually catholics were not very interested in moving to this colony rather protestants they swarmed this colony there were one third catholics in the colony and uh, protestants were the majority there and catholics were the minority well in in reality the colony was settled for catholics but catholics were not very interested in moving to that colony so protestants were started living there then in 1649 the maryland assembly passed an act and it was called toleration act and this act was passed for the catholics of that colony and it was decided that the protestant of that colony would not hurt catholics and catholics are free to practice their religion there and protestants are also free to practice their religion there but why this act was passed well this act was passed for the protection of catholics because catholics were a minority there and we all know that minority are vulnerable and uh, minorities face uh, persecution at the hand of the majorities it happens in the world this is not good but it does happen in the world so the maryland assembly passed the toleration act for the catholics of that colony but actually this problem was not very prominent there i mean catholics were living in peace and protestants were not interested in killing those catholics there and there was just one third of the population of uh, maryland at that time but still maryland assembly cared for these people and they passed this act toleration act in 1649 so this was the story of maryland colony it was settled in 1632 by cecil calvert who was the second lord baltimore and uh, it was settled for the catholics of england at the time now here on the map you can see here is maryland in the south of delaware new jersey and uh, these colonies so that's all about maryland now the story of rhode island rhode island was established in 1636 ad but who established this colony well students we have studied in the previous lecture that uh, there were many sects and creeds of religion at the time in europe and these people were fighting amongst each other so this conflict was taken to america also this conflict moved to america also with the people who moved to america there were puritans there were protestants there were catholics and uh, another sect that was called quaker and in these colonies that were being settled by english there were many dissenters and these dissenters questioned the right of civil government to enforce religious beliefs on the people of those colonies and one such dissenter was Roger Williams Roger Williams was actually a puritan Roger Williams had a different kind of point of view and he did not believe in the right of civil government to enforce religious beliefs and he he asserted that civil government should not be involved in the religious problems of the colony and civil government should not enforce the religious beliefs on people and um, there should be freedom of religion and he believed in tolerance and he believed in respect of the faith of native americans also he believed that if native americans are our policies then let them do whatever they are doing he believed that we should respect the faith of other people and we should tolerate and we should let them practice whatever they are trying to practice and uh, he also tolerated different interpretations of bible so owing to all these views of roger williams he was banished from the colony of uh, massachusetts due to propagation of such ideas and beliefs he was banished from massachusetts so he fled to south and formed a colony there on the principle of freedom of religion and separation 
of state and church because he wanted separation of a state and church he believed that state or the government of the time of the colony should not have the right to to enforce the re religious beliefs and state should not have the right to intervene in the religious beliefs of the people that are being ruled by the state so he fled to south and there he formed a colony on the principle of uh, freedom of religion and separation of a state and church then in 1644 he actually he moved to this area in 1636 AD but he received a charter for his colony from the crown in 1644 AD so where is Rhode Island let's see here is Rhode Island in the south of Massachusetts here we have Rhode Island there's a very small colony if we compare this to Massachusetts if we compare this to larger colony Virginia this was a very small piece of land but still Roger Williams succeeded in getting a land of his own and getting a land of for the people who wanted to practice freedom of religion then we have New Hampshire New Hampshire was um, also a kind of colony that was established by a dissenter and this dissenter was also banished from Massachusetts and uh, the name of this, this dissenter was John Wheelwright John Wheelwright also did not believe in the kind of religion that was being practiced in Massachusetts and he was banished from Massachusetts his views were different from the people who were living in Massachusetts and um, he and his followers got settled in the area north of Massachusetts in 1638 so they got settled in 1638 in New Hampshire here we have New Hampshire in the north of Massachusetts one part of Massachusetts here we have Massachusetts and then another part of Ma Massachusetts that is divided and in between Massachusetts we have New Hampshire and it was established in 1638 but uh, it became a royal colony of England in 1679 so it was established by a dissenter who was banished from Massachusetts and uh, these people moved to New Hampshire in 1638 AD but the colony became a royal colony of England in 1679 now the story of Connecticut Connecticut was a colony that was established in 1662 AD well students there were many preachers in the Massachusetts colony at the time and one such very famous preacher was Thomas Hooker Thomas Hooker was not a dissenter he was a very famous preacher at the time in Massachusetts but his popularity generated jealousy among other preachers and uh, other preachers started planning his ouster they wanted to banish Thomas Hooker from the colony Massachusetts colony so Thomas Hooker did not wait for his ouster and he left the colony himself with some of his followers and he went to the Connecticut River Valley and uh, Thomas Hooker got established there and the, his followers also got established there where is Connecticut this right here is Connecticut colony in the south of Massachusetts these people under the leadership of Thomas Hooker they got settled here and Thomas Hooker was actually instrumental in writing laws for the government of the colonies he used to write laws and he was a very genius person so in Connecticut he wrote laws for the government of the colony and these laws were called the fundamental orders of Connecticut so this was a kind of constitution to run the colony at that time and this was Connecticut colony and uh, like Rhode Island church and priests were not allowed to, to, to take part in politics and the membership of church was not necessary to vote in Connecticut so Connecticut was also a liberal colony at that time and these people did not believe in the uh, amalgamation of church and the state and they believed in the separation of church and state so they moved to 
Connecticut in 1662 under the leadership of Thomas Hooker and in 1662 the Crown granted charter to this colony. Then we have North Carolina and South Carolina. Well, these colonies were established in 1663. First, these colonies were a single colony, then they were separated. Th there is a very interesting story behind the establishment of uh, this, these colonies. In 1649, England faced Puritan's revolution. There were some people who wanted the rule of Puritans in England, so they they started revolution. Charles I, who was the king at the time, he was executed during this Puritan revolution in 1649. And it was happening under the leadership of a dictator whose name was Oliver Cromwell. Then students, there, were, there was a group of eight people that helped Charles to defeat the dictator and regain the throne. And all this happened in 1660 AD. This group of eight people helped Charles to regain his throne and uh, settle his rule in England at the time. Charles II wanted to pay off the debt to the group of eight people and he wanted to give a reward to this group of eight people and uh, he gave a colony to these people and it was called a proprietary colony. I've explained it in the beginning of this lecture that a proprietary colony is a colony that is given to a person or a group of person or family by the king of england so north carolina and south carolina was also a proprietary colony and it was given to a group of eight people that helped charles to regain his throne in 1660 after the puritans revolution in england so the charter of this colony was granted in 1663 AD and these people went to America, they migrated to America and they started settling themselves there. Well, the area was named Carolina after the name of Queen Caroline. Queen Caroline was the wife of King Charles at the time, King Charles II. So they named this area Carolina and uh, the proprietors tried to form a government in Carolina and they wrote a constitution named Fundamental Constitution of Carolina. But students later, this colony got divided. Well, I could not study the reasons behind this division. Uh, I think this is enough for us to know that uh, this colony was um, a proprietary colony and uh, it was given to a group of eight people. Whatever I have taught here, I think this is enough. So this right here is the colony North Carolina and South Carolina in the north of Georgia. So this was the story of North Carolina and South Carolina. Now the story of New York. New York was a colony that was established in 1664 AD. Well, I should not say that it was established because it was already established by the Dutch. It was a Dutch colony and um, it was conquered by, or I should say that it was taken over by English from Dutch people. Well, it was the New Netherlands colony and uh, it was a Dutch colony and it was one of the desire of King Charles II and his brother James, the Duke of York. These people always watched this colony with an envious eye and they wanted this colony at all costs because this was a very, very valuable land and the port of Monaton Island intensified the value of this land and it intensified the desire of King Charles II and his brother James, the Duke of York. On the other hand, Dutch also had not been much successful in establishing colonies in America, so these things intensified the desire of King Charles II and he wanted this colony, New Netherlands, at all costs. So, he attacked this colony and uh, there was a dictator of New Netherlands, Peter Stuyvesant, and uh, Peter was not liked by his people very much. He was a cruel dictator and he was not liked by his people. So the people of New Netherlands at the time, the Dutch people, they did not want to fight under the leadership of uh, Peter Stuyvesant and uh, they 
overruled the order of their dictator to fight with the English colonizers and they did not fight. So they surrendered very peacefully without even fighting. They surrendered and King Charles II won this land and uh, he gave this land to his brother James who was the Duke of York at the time. So this is the reason this colony is named New York. It is named after the Duke of York and it was renamed as New York. So here we have on the map New York in the north of Pennsylvania and in the south of New Hampshire. So this was the story of New York. Now the New Jersey colony, the New Jersey colony was established in 1664 AD. Well, students, we have studied the story of New York colony. We know that New York colony was founded in 1664 AD and it was conquered by James, who was the Duke of York, and he won this colony from the Dutch Empire. So it was an English colony with Dutch settlers. The people who were living in that colony were Dutch. So there were social, economic and ethnic tensions between the Dutch and the English colonizers because the people who were living in that colony were Dutch and the people who were ruling that colony, they were English. So James, who was the Duke of York, he gave the southern region of New York colony to two of his friends, Lord John Berkeley and Sir George Carteret. He could not deal with the problems of that land at that time because there were I have explained it there were social economic and ethnic tensions between the Dutch and the English colonizers so the Duke of York he did not want to deal with these problems and he he gave the southern region of New York to his friends Lord John Berkeley and Sir George Carteret. Sir George Carteret had served as the governor of Jersey and he named the area as New Jersey. The colony was divided between Sir George Carteret and Lord John Berkeley into East Jersey and West Jersey respectively. Sir George Carteret, he took care of the matters of East Jersey and Sir uh, Lord John Berkeley, he took care of the matter of the West Jersey. But uh, in 1707, the colony the East Jersey and West Jersey was united and today we have this call this state of New Jersey it was founded in 1664 here we have New Jersey in the south of New York and east of Pennsylvania this is New Jersey so this was the story of New Jersey now the story of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania was established in 1681 AD by a person named William Penn. William Penn was also another dissenter of that time and his beliefs of religion were very different and his beliefs were not the kind of beliefs that the people had at that time. And he was actually a believer of equality of men. He believed in equality of men. He disdained the superiority of priests and bishops and did not believe in ceremonial worships. He used to believe that faith is in heart and uh, there is no need of these ceremonial worships that Catholics do, that uh, Puritans do. There is no need of these ceremonial worships and he disdained the superiority of priests and bishops. He disliked that why these priests and bishops are considered as the superior people of the society. He did not believe in this. And he denounced war also, and he also did not like the authority of kings and em emperors. He used to believe that wars are cruel, wars are evil, and uh, these kings and emperors are also cruel, and uh, they are evil because these people impose war on their innocent people. So he denounced all these things. He was a Quaker actually at the time and he organized Quaker societies. King Charles, uh, he owned a large sum of money to the father of William Penn, whose name was Admiral William Penn. So Admiral William Penn died and uh, William Penn inherited this um, 
debt and King Charles gave a piece of land to William Penn to settle the debt. William Penn used that land as a heaven for Quakers. He established a colony and he called, he invited all the Quakers to live in that colony. Then in 1681, he received a charter for his colony, which was called Pennsylvania after William Penn, because his name was Penn, so he named his colony Pennsylvania. And all this happened in 1681. This society, colony was actually a liberal colony. It was a liberal state and it enjoyed the principle of freedom of conscience. There, were, there was freedom of religion, there was freedom of conscience, and all these things were practiced in that colony. So this was a liberal state. Now the Delaware colony, well, Delaware was established in 1664 AD. Or I should not say that it was established because Delaware was actually a kind of colony that could never earn the title of a proper colony. There were conflicts between people and uh, there was no owner of this colony. And uh, it was an apple of discord among many people. It's in the south of Pennsylvania, as you can see here. This right here is Delaware, and it was a Dutch colony. It was conquered by James, the Duke of York, from Dutch. There were many disputes, and uh, these disputes aroused regarding the ownership of the colony Delaware. Cecil Calvert, who was the second Lord Baltimore, he claimed the western shore of Delaware Bay. He wanted this area. And uh, young William Penn, who was the owner of Pennsylvania colony, here we have Pennsylvania, that is in the east of Delaware, or I should say that uh, that shares this the northern border of Delaware. And he also wanted an outlet to see from his colony, so he also wanted western shore of Delaware Bay. So these two people were fighting Cecil Calvert and uh, William Penn and uh, the colony was actually conquered by James, the Duke of York. So the dispute remained continued till the independence of America and there was no actual owner of this colony till the independence of America. Now the story of Georgia. Well, the story of Georgia is not very long. Uh, a very simple story, Georgia was established in 1732 AD and it was the last colony of English in America and you can see here that it is, is, it is in the south of South Carolina, here we have Georgia and here is Florida. Florida was a colony of Spain. We have studied that Florida was the first colony established by European imperial power in America and it was established by Spain and first it was named St. Augustine then it was the name was changed to Florida. So Georgia was in the north of Florida and in the south of South Carolina and it was the last colony of English in America. It was a buffer colony between Florida and Carolina because we all know that uh, Florida belonged to Spain and all these 13 colonies these 13 colonies belonged to English colonizers. So that's all about Georgia. And uh, we have studied this different stories of all these different 13 states founded by English colonizers in America. So that's all. I hope I've made myself clear. I hope all of you understand. All of you can understand whatever I've explained here because I tried to make things very simple for all of you. Now, students, we are done with the topic of colonization of America by European imperial powers. We know that the first people who migrated to America were Spanish and they settled their Spanish empire there. Then France followed suit. Then there were Dutch, there were Portugal, and uh, the last colonizers were English people. They came to America and uh, English was the mightiest colonizer at the time and English they settled 13 British colonies there 
and English were also the last to leave America and uh, the people of America they gained independence from English colonizers in 1776. So this was the story of colonization of America by the European imperial powers. This was a long story and today Alhamdulillah we have ended this but students there is one more thing that we did not study. We have studied all the colonization of America. Now a question arises in mind that why these European power were entrusted in colonization of America? What were the factors behind the colonization of America? So we have not studied these factors yet and inshallah in the next lecture we would study these factors in detail. We would study that why these European powers were entrusted in colonization of America what were the factors so we would study these factors in detail in the next lecture inshallah till then thank you al hafiz don't forget to like comment share this lecture and don't forget to subscribe the channel knowledge realm and if you have knowledge on this topic you can definitely share that knowledge for the betterment of other people you can share that knowledge in the comment section so thank you Allah Hafiz and don't forget to subscribe the channel Knowledge Realm.